Hello, everybody. My name is Matthias Grimmer, and today I would like to talk about Project Zulong, an LLVM bitcode interpreter on the GraalVM. And before we start with this talk, I would like uh, Oracle wants you to know that the following presentation gives an insight into a line of research without further commitments. The world is polyglot. <laughs> there are many great programming languages out there, and programmers use the tools and programming languages that suit their needs most. However, when we try to combine and compose different programming languages, we will immediately see that all these program programming languages live in distinct worlds. The implementation of each programming language is different, which makes it hard to combine programming languages. It requires us to write boilerplate code, and when running our applications, we will, we will experience performance bottlenecks caused by these language boundaries. Our group at Oracle Labs invented the GraalVM, and the GraalVM resolves these issues because it allows you to easily compose different programming languages, provides a rich set of tools that you can use with each and every of these programming languages, and it seems to be a perfect world. However, appearances are deceiving. All of these programming languages, in one way or another, like to talk to native code. Java likes to use GNI. For Ruby, there are C extensions. In Node.js, there are native modules. Python also uses C extensions, and so on and so forth. And our native code, again, lives in a separate world, a world where code is statically compiled, a world where, are, where there are no dynamic checks whenever we access memory, where there are pointers, where there can be buffer flow overflows, and so on and so forth. Also, the fact that we have pre-compiled binaries, again, introduces a, a boundary between the VMs, like the JVM, and pre-compiled native code. In today's talk, we will talk about Zulong, and Zulong, the project Zulong, makes C, C++, and all of your native languages a first-class citizen in GraalVM. And before we start with details about Zulong, let's take a closer look at what the GraalVM actually is. The GraalVM consists of many different languages, and we use the Truffle framework to implement those languages. The Truffle framework is an API that allows you to implement um, your favorite programming language, for example, using an AST interpreter. Truffle itself uses the Graal compiler as a dynamic compiler to compile those programming languages at runtime to machine code, and those two things then can run on top of Hotspot or on top of Substrate VM. Let's have a closer look or a brief look at the idea behind Truffle. The idea is very simple. You parse a programming language to a tree, an AST for example, then you start interpreting this EST. During interpretation, you collect profiling feedback and specialize your tree. For example, you specialize your JavaScript plus operation, for example, on numbers only, if this plus only adds up numbers. Once your tree is executed frequently enough and it gets hot, we partially evaluate this tree and compile it to machine code. Partial evaluation means that we assume the tree is stable, inline all the nodes into a single code blob, optimize it, and then get optimized machine code. We hereby heavily rely on optimistic assumptions about our profiling uh, and about our program being um, behaving uh, constantly. And of course, these, uh, these assumptions can go wrong. We have to de-optimize, throw away the machine code, transfer back to interpreter, re-specialize, and then the cycle starts over again. So that was a very quick introduction to Truffle. I guess most of you guys know about Truffle al already. So let's directly take a look at Sulong. So as already said, Sulong is an LLVM bitcode interpreter. That means you compile your C, C++ Fortran code using your, an LLVM, bit, uh, an LLVM front end and compile it to LLVM bitcode. Once you have this bitcode file, you can run it on top of GraalVM using Sulong. So for example, if we would compile a C snippet like this to LLVM bitcode, we would use Clang, 
and then we would get this bit code file for our C snippet and can directly run it on Sulon. Allocations. Your native, alloc uh, your native applications will do allocation, and Sulong allocates those um, guest language allocations on the native heap. So whenever your LLVM bitcode does some allocation, like native code, we allocate it on the native heap using the unsafe API. And given that we are running LLVM bitcode, we are using the same alignment for the data as, for example, binaries would do that are compiled using GCC or LLVM. And that also allows us to exchange our allocations with pre-compiled native code. So what this means is that Sulong cannot only run your LLVM bitcode on top of GraalVM, but it can also access pre-compiled binaries. So main application running on top of Sulong, and you're able to somehow link to pre-compiled binaries as you're used to when compiling and running your native code using normal native compilers. And this is done using Truffle's native interface, which is part of Truffle and allows you to easily access pre-compiled binaries. So here is our LLVM bitcode example again. And this example uh, consists of three basic blocks. The first basic block on top is just a branch to the second one. The second one contains the function call, the addition, the comparison, and another branch. And the last one is a return statement. On the very right, you can see the truffle nodes we built in Sulong for this LLVM bitcode. On the very right, you see all the nodes we built for the individual statement. In the middle, we have the three basic blocks. So the three basic blocks just group together our statements. And on the very left, we have the basic block dispatch node. And each basic block is implemented easily. All we need to do is we need to, read, we need to iterate over all children of all statements and execute them. And during partial evaluation, we need to inline all children. And in that case, it's pretty easy. We unroll this loop and then uh, can ex execute and inline all the statements. It gets trickier when we take a look at the basic block dispatch node, because this node actually is responsible also for, for expressing the control flow of our application. So basic block zero has a direct successor, namely basic block one. Basic block one is the loop body. It can jump back to itself to basic block one, and it can jump to basic block two, loop exit, and basic block two then does not have any successor. It's the return of the function. In that case, partial evaluation is not uh, as straightforward as before, because Given this loop, we cannot just inline um, all basic blocks because there is also the control flow we need to express. So big question is, how can we partially evaluate this loop? And we have to, first of all, we have to extend our partial evaluation algorithm a bit, but we need to also help the compiler a bit in order to allow him to unroll this loop. And what we do is, we add some additional information to every basic block. What we do is we add an array, of all, an array to each basic block that stores all possible successors of this basic block. And this array is a partial evaluation constant. That means when the compiler partially evaluates this very, this very basic block, it can see what successors can follow this basic block. And now we, on the, on the left, you can see the source code, and the source code uh, of our basic block dispatch implementation uh, got a bit longer, and we added what, a bit, what looks a bit like an indirection, namely we take a look so, so we execute the basic block, get back an index into this successes array, 
and then we read the successor out of the successes array given the index next and get back the index of the next basic block. That really seems like an interaction, but we will see that this allows the compiler to easily unroll the loop. So the compiler now starts peeling the loop. The first iteration can be peeled easily because with the loop, so the, the index was initialized with zero, so we can easily peel out the first iteration, and that's easy so far. And now we benefit from our partially, uh, our partial evaluation constant successes array. Next is the variable next is a runtime value. The compiler doesn't know anything about it, but it uses it as an index into our successes array, and the successes array itself is a partial evaluation constant. So in this case, we know that index can only be one which allows us to peel the next iteration out of the loop. And we do the same again. Successors is again a partial evaluation constant, and in this case, the compiler sees, whoops, there are two possible successors, so it needs to insert a control flow split. So here is the split in pseudocode, and then the compiler also recognizes that the the one branch where index is one has already been expanded before, and when he sees that, he just inserts a back edge and doesn't further expand this branch. In the else branch, we continue as before, we peel the second iteration out of the loop, and afterwards insert the loop itself again. Last iteration, the compiler sees that the loop will now terminate, index is minus one, and the loop unrolling has terminated, and we successfully removed this loop, and we were able to partially evaluate an in, uh, this node, and we were able to inline all basic blocks into our basic block dispatch node. And after that, we have a machine code blob for our native uh, C++ function, um, and we can optimize it and uh, it will result in good performance on GraalVM. So that was a very brief introduction to how Zulong works. It's, other than that, it's very similar to other Truffle languages. And I would like to present a small demo of Zulong now. And what I'm going to show you now, you can try that yourself. Please go to the Oracle TED network, download the GraalVM, and the example I'm running should run on your machine too. Okay, so we are not going to write a, a simple C application because I guess all of us have written a C application before and we did run it. So what we want to do now is we want to combine C with other languages and therefore demonstrate the strengths of the GraalVM. So I start my C application, I define a struct for a point. I will add a function to allocate and initialize a point and a function to free a point. And these functions, we want to use them from our JavaScript application in a second. And I will also add two getter functions to get the X and Y properties of our struct and yes, all these functions will be used from our JavaScript application. So let's write the JavaScript application. The first thing we do is we load the bitcode file into Polyglot. We will start the, we will start, uh, the GraalVM um, using this JavaScript file. So the first thing we do is we load the C part of our small application. Then we import all the functions we just defined in C code so, so that we can use them from JavaScript. And here, we, just, we are just using the C functions we just defined from within JavaScript. So let's run that. First thing is we need to do is we need to compile the C code, and then we can run it.
it's no big surprise. We, the program works as expected, and what we are doing is we are accessing our C functions from within JavaScript. So let's make this a bit more interesting. We add another function, an array reduce function. This is a C function that takes a double pointer, which points to an array. It takes the size of the array, and it takes an op function that we use to reduce the array to single value. And now let's use this very function also from within JavaScript. So what I did is I imported this array reduce function as before. I defined a JavaScript plus function. And now I'm calling our C function from JavaScript. I, uh, as arguments, I pass the JavaScript array, the length, and the JavaScript function. And what will now happen is that we will bind a JavaScript array to this double star array and a JavaScript function to the C function pointer variable here. And at this line, C will call back into JavaScript and use the JavaScript add to, to perform the add of our array values. Let's compile again and run, in, run this. And as before, we get the result that we expected. And what we just did is we had an, an application where we tightly uh, coupled JavaScript and C, and all of that was running on top of, uh, on top of the GraalVM. You might wonder why use C here or why use JavaScript, uh, why use C from JavaScript at all. Of course, the answer might be performance. And to demonstrate a bit what we can do, given that we can tightly combine JavaScript and C, I would like to extend this point example a little bit further. And what I did is I I'm now allocating an array of points, and I'm in C, so I create an array of point and not of point star. I'm filling up the values, and then I'd like to shift all elements in our point array by a certain delta, just an example. And as I'm in C, I'm using the array indexing um, rather than accessing the properties directly. And then there is a small harness uh, just to, to yeah, measure the performance. And what I, what I would like to do now is I'm compiling it again, and I've compiled this C file now using LLVM 03, all optimizations enabled. And let's run this to get, this, uh, to get the native execution time. Now let's go back. So time was a bit more than 10 milliseconds. And now let's go back into JavaScript and compare it to JavaScript performance. So what we are doing now is we are again uh, allocating an array of points. This time it's JavaScript points. And we are running the same micro benchmark as before and shifting all these JavaScript points by a certain delta. Given that we are on top of GraalVM, we can also use the C functions we just defined. So here I'm allocating my C array. And I can use the C array from JavaScript. And so I write the shift function also in JavaScript. And as this is a C array, I can use the same nice array indexing as before from within JavaScript and shift the C array from JavaScript. So it's an array of value types. And now let's run that on RALVM. So <clears throat> the, first, the first part is the JavaScript application, and it takes about 50 milliseconds. And when we do the same thing, but with uh, the C array, we can see that performance improves quite a bit and we get close to the pure native performance that was not using Graal at all or the Graal, Graal VM at all. And in this case, our JavaScript plus C 
uh, application has close to native performance. Okay, what else can we do uh, with Sulong on GraalVM? Let's talk a bit about Ruby. Ruby has the C extension API. It's an awesome API that allows you to write parts of your Ruby application or modules in C code. And one would assume that there is a very clean API between the Ruby engine and the C extension itself that makes it easy for other Ruby implementations to support this API. Well, sadly, that's not the case. The API is rather nasty, and it reveals a lot of MRI internals to the C ex extension, and de depending on um, how well behaved the C programmer was, it is easy to run, um, or it is very hard to, to provide an API that can run all C extensions out there. And that leaves us with a rather unsatisfying status quo where C extensions are only well supported when running on MRI. And now I would like to show you how we implemented the C extension API on top of GraalVM. So what you see here is a very small C extension. On the very left, you have the Ruby code. The Ruby code uh, instantiates the C extension C array, uh, and then it calls arraySOM, passes a Ruby array to the C code, and on the very left, you have the for loop that simply adds up all values in our C array. And we are using different C extension functions, like, for example, this Ruby array entry function that allows you to get a certain element out of a Ruby array. And these C extension functions are all defined in a header file, in this Ruby header file. And this Ruby header file it contains all C extension functions that we need to support on GraalVM. And what we did is we, took, uh, we, we implemented our own Ruby header file where we just listed all, de all function definitions. And then we introduced a Ruby.c file that contains all the implementations of this, Ruby dot, uh, of this Ruby header file. And so we are implementing the C extension API in pure C. So, for example, in order to access the, uh, the nth element of a Ruby array, we are just using Truffle API, Truffle's interop API, in order to access the Ruby array. Down here you can see Truffle read index, which is nothing else than accessing a foreign array from C. There are also functions that are not so easy to implement on C side, for example, the fix num to integer function. And what we do is we implement this function in Ruby. And then just call the implementation of fix to int from C. So we are calling the Ruby function from C that implements this C extension function. And now we have a system where we implemented an existing API across two languages in pure guest language code. So there was no need to tweak Sulong, nor there was a need to tweak Truffle Ruby. We could implement the entire API in guest language code. And all we need to do is we ship ruby.c and ruby.rb together with uh, GraalVM, which allows you to run existing C extensions on GraalVM. Another benefit, we're on top of GraalVM, so we're also on top of Truffle and all these applications are just a bunch of Truffle nodes and we can apply inlining and the differences between languages are gone once we have Truffle nodes for them, so we can inline acro across language boundaries. So your, C so your C extension can inline your Ruby code and your Ruby code inlines the C extension, there is no compilation boundary between those two languages anymore. We did some performance measurements, and the baseline here 
um, is MRI running image manipulation libraries and the baseline is running pure Ruby code. And for this pixel manipulation libraries, there also exists a C extension version. And that's what you see in the upper bar, the MRI with C extension, that's the same benchmark, but implemented in, uh, with the C extensions running on MRI. And we took the same C extension benchmarks and run it on our system, and what we could see is that it's then about three times faster than MRI. And the reason why it's so much faster is simple. It's cross-language inlining. There are a lot of calls between uh, Ruby code and C code. For example, for each and every array access, uh, object access, and so on and so forth. And the fact that our compiler now can see through those barriers allows us to get very good performance. Okay, another demonstration. Now I would like to show you that our C extension implementation is something real and not just a toy. And I couldn't think of a better example than running OpenSSL, a C extension on the GraalVM, which is a rather big and nasty uh, Ruby module implemented using C extensions. And we want to use the OpenURI um, module from Ruby, the OpenURI module allows us to get the HTML code from a web page. Let's just use GitHub. And this, uh, this module directly depends on OpenSSL, and OpenSSL, well, it's a C extension, more or less. Okay, so what we are about to do is first we want to look, uh, first we want to load the OpenSSL C extension, and we do that by require OpenSSL. So that now loads OpenSSL, and let's check whether it's available by doing puts. Oh, I'm very sorry. Yes. So what I did is I loaded the OpenSSL C extension here, and now let's check if it's available. Puts. And we can see that OpenSSL is now available. So now let's load OpenURI, and finally let's do put open HTTPS github.com. Okay, I hope the internet connection works, but yes, we should now see the content of the GitHub page. So, my point here is that you can use the GraalVM and Ruby plus C extensions for real-world code and run real-world C extensions on top of GraalVM. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to slides. And we don't want to stop here, so we want to also implement other native interfaces, for example, the uh, C, C++ interface of R or Python, the same way we did for, for Ruby, and benefit from having native languages on top of GraalVM. Okay, now let's put some cream on the top. Um, let's make our, ex let's make the execution of native code on, on top of GraalVM memory safe, and this is done in a research cooperation with JKU Linz. At the beginning I told you whenever Sulong does an allocation, it, this allocation is done on the native heap. For example, for this struct, we would just allocate 16 bytes on the native heap. And in, yesterday, John Rose said that um, the Checks at runtimes are one superpower of 
the Java VM, and now we want to use this superpower also for native applications running on top of the Graal VM. And what we do is we want to use Java allocations in order to represent um, C, C++ data structures. And that gives us spatial, uh, spatial memory safety because we are not directly accessing data on the native heap, but we are using Java objects to represent those objects. And we're not using raw pointer values, but we implement uh, pointer values using Java references plus a certain offset. We will see that in a second. And given this abstraction that we are using to implement an even lower level concept allows us to make native languages running on Zulong memory safe. And we will get temporal safeness for free because there is a mighty garbage collect in the background which ensures that we do not access, for example, access memory after it has been freed. So this example, um, our structure, we, we are using a map-like Java object to implement structs and for every member in a struct, we add a slot to our map and the identifier of these slots is just the byte offset that uh, a native pointer arithmetic would add to the base pointer. And we implement pointers using fat pointer objects and a fat pointer object is nothing else than a reference to the Java map and an offset and this offset we can then use to implement pointer arithmetic. And it doesn't matter whether uh, an access to a struct is like indicated here as arrow B or some weird point arithmetic as long as the offset is then zero or eight and with offset zero we access the first um, first entry in our map and if offset is eight, we use eight as an identifier into this map and can access the second property and for example write value 4.2 to this struct. And this is work in progress, this is research, but once, it's, uh, once we have this, that means whenever you access native code from Java or access native code from, from your C extensions, you're not throwing away all the safety guarantees, but also C code or native code will run safely and we can still guarantee memory safeness. And that all already brings me to the end of my presentation. So what we did with Sulong, Sulong brings native languages to the Graal VM and makes them a first class citizen in the Graal VM. Sulong allows you to efficiently combine different high level languages with native languages. Sulong can implement existing native interfaces like the C extension interface and the cream on the top is that in the future we will also be able to guarantee memory safety when running native applications on GraalVM. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. Yes. Uh, so I just wondering, um, do you know how much overhead um, to use the safety memory model? Uh, I cannot yet answer that. So the memory safeness is very early, early work. Um, I'd like to point you to different papers uh, that are already out there uh, talking about memory safety and so long, but I do not have an evaluation using big benchmarks here. And sorry, I have to point you to to, to the scientific papers. Cool. Thanks. So I have two questions. Yeah. So uh, do you uh, support like advanced features of C like set jump, long jump? And like can I copy the Java stack and then can I, like uh, reinvoke it from C? Okay, set jump, long jumps is not yet supported. Um, other than that, 
Um, Shulong is still single-threaded, uh, so you cannot fork, but you can use Shulong from different threads. That's possible, but Shulong itself cannot fork. That's, and, that's the current limitations of Shulong, yes. And the second question would be, um, how do the this interact with garbage collection, like if you if in C where you have like malloc and free, and then in Java, how do you get like have the garbage collectors kind of or, or the garbage collector communicate with manual okay. memory? Okay. Yes, um, that is a very good point. When 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 running when running C code on 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 top of a JVM, um, of course, the different memory models clash, and it works it works. Um, it works pretty well, the fact that um, in Sulong we can store all the local variables in Java data structures. So in Truffle we call it the frame. It contains all the local variables and we can store like um, managed, managed values in there as, as, yeah, that's no problem. However, there is some limitations. For example, it is not possible to store, for example, a reference to a JavaScript array into a C struct. That's just not possible. And in such cases, we say, whoops, um, that's not possible. And you have to, to resort to some workaround. Our workarounds are, for example, some, some maps that map point to reference. And so, for example, what we do is, we, we get, for a reference, we get an, 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 a long value that somehow maps to, to the reference that we can then store into a struct, but that's all more workarounds. But um, given that there will be a, a memory safe version of Sulong, where we not use the native memory anymore, but only use Java data structures, then we have also resolved this this limitation, but currently, yes, given native, uh, given Sulong and its native allocations, that's that's a limitation. But for example, in our C extension work, it almost never occurs. Hi, uh, this is really great work. Um, but I have a question on the calling convention. Like um, Clang and other um, LVM front ends, they generate code that sometimes rely on some like very subtle um, platform dependent um, calling conventions. For example, if you return a struct in C and if you compile that down to LVM IR, then on different architectures you might get different like weird uh, stuff. Like sometimes a struct may get unpacked, or sometimes it um, it gets allocated in the parent frame, in the caller frame, and then a pointer is passed down. So how does Sulong handle that? And so that that's the first question. The second is um, how does Sulong work with the standard runtime libraries of these native languages, and especially uh, with the calling convention in mind? Okay, I start with the second one. Um, Sulon can access the, the native library via Truffle's native interface, so that's pretty simple native calls that we have to do. And regarding your first question, so LLVM IR is very nice here because um, either it uses um, built-ins that we just implement in Java, um, or the Sulong only has to implement all the, um, all the LLVM IR bit codes and these, these differences you mentioned, for example, when returning a struct, are not visible to, to Sulong. So Sulong just interprets the, or executes LLVM IR and, and those, those differences do not matter for us. I see, so you're expecting that the um, LLVM IR generated from a front end is going to be compatible with whatever yeah. runtime library yeah. that you're, okay, got it, thanks. Hey, uh, super fun work. Uh, similar to the set jump long jump question, you had a Ruby code snippet that threw an exception. Uh, what are the semantics for exception throwing um, from say, managed from Ruby into C, does it, um, or, yeah. Yeah, uh, 
So that all boils down to, to Truffle Sinterop API. So when there are exceptions across uh, languages, um, it's a matter of how we want to show them to the user. I, I wish I could have showed you um, uh, a stack trace across Ruby and C. I'd like to invite you to check out the next version of GraalVM and throw an exception in C or in Ruby and then take a look at the stack trace and what you will see is you will really see the guest language uh, stack trace where you have a C frame, a Ruby frame, a C frame, Ruby frame. So, yes. Cool. Uh, and just a quick follow-up. Have you thought about what the right thing to do is uh, with, say for instance, if I'm, we're executing C and we seg fault, could you imagine wanting to like wrap that in a native uh, exception and propagating it back or do you think it's better if it just crashes like it normally would? Currently we just crash. Um, could be possible, yes, to, to wrap that, but currently we just, yeah, set forth, yes. Right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, really interesting work. <laughs> it looks like one of the goals is memory safety, and uh, I'm sure you know LLVM has you know, memory safety features in the form of its sanitizers, address sanitizer, memory sanitizer. Yes. I was wondering if you could, <clears throat> I'm sorry, little horse. Uh, I was wondering if you could address the advantages or disadvantages of, uh, of doing something like this for memory safety versus just compiling your .so with LLVM with the sanitizers turned on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the sanitizer is by far, uh, does by far not catch all issues. Um, and given that we perform checks at runtime, allows us to catch um, the, the arrow uh, or the problem right before it occurs. And the question you just raised is um, a very good fit to one of our recent papers where we uh, dive into details and compare like address sanitizer, uh, uh, the safe version of Sulong and so on and so forth, and point out the advantages of each other and um, measure performance differences and if you like, I can I can show you the paper right after after this talk, and I then we. Sure, well, I can just search for it. And... I'm not yet published. It's oh, only submitted, would, but like that. yeah. Then let's let's continue this afterwards. Yes, there is plenty of work there. Okay, then, thank you very much.